Welcome to the FlowerSchool.com video library. I'm Leanne Kessler, director of the Floral Design Institute, here to share with you our latest issue, the Blushing Bride Antique Bridal Bouquet. You may be familiar with the bloom called the Blushing Bride. It's in the family of the Proteas. It's got papery white bracts, little feathery tufts in the center that could be pinks or whites. It's called Blushing Bride because it was so commonly used in bridal bouquets in South Africa. Today, it's still grown in South Africa, but it's also grown in Australia, here in the United States, including even in Hawaii and in Israel. So it's a beautiful bloom that's available abundantly, but not absolutely year-round. I was so lucky to find it today. I thought, oh, I have to use it in a beautiful bridal bouquet. The Blushing Bride Protea has such strong stems, it's perfect for a hand tie bouquet. You just want to remove all the foliage down the sides so you've got a nice clean stem to work with. Just cleaning it off like so makes it easy to work with when you go to put your bouquet together. Then adding to the Protea, we're going to use some Caramel Antique Garden Roses such a gorgeous flower and with this soft peachy beige yellow creamy color it blends so nicely it's kind of one of those mutant colors that just takes on the cast of the materials that you put it with then i'm adding pods scabiosa pods and they're neutral brown tan and echinacea pods also known as cone flower and it picks up a little more of the orange and then some fabulous thornless, yes I said thornless, ornamental blackberries. Wouldn't things be beautiful together? All these neutral colors blending together and then adding the blushing bride should be stunning. For the center of my bouquet, I do want to make sure I get some of the blushing bride. So I'm going to start by clustering a couple of them in my hand, both open and closed, and then tucking in a little bit of each item. So maybe one of the berries, one of the gabiosa pods, finding a little place to nestle it, and then one of the echinacea pods, and then a rose. So I have a starting point that has a little bit of everything in my hand, and then I start turning and adding in Maybe more roses, maybe another berry. And I just add it into my hand by placing the heads one direction, stem another. Maybe a couple more. And you just mix and match, turning it. And turning. And you can see by adding in pairs, maybe one tucked below, creates depth so that it looks like it has a variety of levels. Tucking lower, turning. I think maybe a little more of the Blushing Bride. Don't want to forget those. See how he's tucked low? Drawing your eye in so it doesn't create a very flat bouquet. Maybe out a little further. A few more berries over on that side. And you can see the textures working together. And I just keep turning filling in so that I go with the flowers randomly, but yet grouped. So that sounds contradictory, but you can see how I've got a grouping and a grouping and a grouping. And then as I finish, I start thinking about my roundness because I'm not round yet. And I can tuck materials in to finish off looking round. One of the beauties of using the pods and the Blushing Bride is that they're so sturdy that you can tuck them around the garden roses and they help support them. 
So the fact that garden roses are not as sturdy works out okay because they're protected and the other blooms support them both visually and actually to keep them from looking like they're drooping because the other flowers will hold their heads up. So I go through now and just enhance with the pods, thinking about my form, getting that roundness going, and turning, tucking, and again turning and looking, filling in, and then double checking that it's beautiful and that everything is supported visually so that it won't fade and droop. We want to create a little bit of a collar on the back side just to finish it off. And there's some gorgeous autumn sedum that just tucks in nicely, adding that darker color. And I just collar it around, keeping it low underneath the other materials. Collaring until I get it all the way around and turning. And then if I wanted to, I could go back and even add a layer of Galax just to finish it. And then turn it back so that I keep those going around. It just finishes the bouquet in a more polished fashion so you don't see all of the stems radiating outwards. To hold it all together, I'm just going to use a piece of bind wire, pulling off a section, giving it a cut, and then wrapping above my hand snugly, making sure that it'll stay together. and then tying the two ends, twisting them. Then general rule of thumb is that you want about two hand lengths. So I need to cut my stems off just below my hands. Cleaning it all up. Then to give it an antique finish, I've got a handmade doily it's an antique ivory color. I'm just going to wrap that around the stems, tucking it tightly, leaving the lower stems exposed so they can actually set down in a vase of very shallow water so that it doesn't wick up onto the doily. Although you could flip it up a little bit too as you set it into water, but for now I want it down and then using a little bit of copper bullion wire, lashing that to the stems, coming down all the way. And it helps hold the stems together in a more graceful finish, wrapping, wrapping. And it gives a beautiful texture for the bride to hang on to. It feels so comfortable. It will protect her hand from all those stems. And then when I get back down to the bottom, Finding the extra little piece I left, giving it a cut, and twisting those two together to hold it secure. The Blushing Bride Protea is one of those very special flowers. It was almost extinct in the late 60s, early 70s because it was overused in bridal bouquets. But thanks to farmers worldwide that have planted it, taken care of it, nurtured it, it's now available again and not near extinction. What a gorgeous flower. 
For more creative inspiration, check out our website at flowerschool.com. If you've got questions or want help in trying to locate it, feel free to contact us directly. You can reach us by phone at 800-819-8089, or if email is easier, feel free to use my personal email. It's Leanne, L-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, at floraldesigninstitute.com. Happy wedding for the blushing bride. Have fun and do something you love.